guys, it's Alicia and welcome back to my channel. This has gotten to be probably one of my favorite times of the month and that is when I do the wrap up. We are currently wrapping up the month of May and that's mind blowing to me because that means next is June and June is the sixth month of the year. We are halfway through the year already people crazy to me. I love showing what I've read in the month and I've kind of been giving myself TBRs recently. Again, I don't do that, but I've been doing it and it's kind of been working well for me. So, I don't know. Okay, we're going to be talking about what I read in the month of May. So, I read quite a few ebooks this month, more than I normally read. Um, I only read a total of one, two, three, four, five four paperbacks completely and then the rest were ebooks. So the first book that I read in the month of May, technically I finished May 1st and I believe I included it in my April wrap up. I'm not entirely sure. But that was Last Chance Wife by Jeanette Foreman. I rated this a 4 out of 5 star and this was a love inspired historical and it was so so cute and I do believe that I talked about it in my April wrap up but it was an adorable story so technically I finished that May 1st I think I finished it at like 1 o'clock in the morning so Goodreads told me I finished it on May 1st but I think I finished it in April so the first book I actually read and finished in the month of May started and finished in the month of May was the Backcountry Brides collection with stories by Shannon McNear Carrie Fancett Pagels, Angela K. Couch, Deborah E. Marvin, Gabrielle Meyer, Jennifer Hudson Taylor, Peg Thompson, and Denise Weiner. And this was a really fun, uh, quick read. All there were eight 18th century women seeking love on colonial Americans' frontier. So it was eight stories about eight different women in different time periods during America's colonial time. Overall, I rated the whole collection a 4 out of 5 stars. Um, there were some stories that I preferred over others, but overall I enjoyed it. I will say that I was texting some of my friends and just kind of like, towards the end of it, I was just kind of getting tired of the war and this, this, this part of history, this time in history is not my favorite. I just get tired of all the war that happened and everything. So, and most of the time when you're in colonial era, historical fiction wise, you're in the middle of a war and like you're close to a war and it just kind of gets old for me personally. So I was getting kind of tired of it towards the end, but I still enjoyed the last couple stories. You can read my full review on I broke down each story all eight of them on my blog which the link to that direct blog post will be in the description if you'd like to check it out um, I go in further detail about each story and my rating on each story because there, again some I liked more than others and some I just really didn't like the next book I read was called Never Doubt a Duke by Regina Scott and it was another ebook I rated it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. Regina Scott wrote for the Love Inspired Historical line and I absolutely loved her writing. And I reviewed her last book that she wrote for the line last late last year I believe. And then she made it known that she was branching out. She was still writing but she was technically indie publishing. So I have had the honor of working with Regina. She is so amazing. And I got to read Never Doubt a Duke early before it released. And I reviewed it. And my review is again on the blog. I loved it so much. It was such a cute book. And book two actually comes out June 13th. And I will be reading and reviewing it. Hopefully I will get my review up before then. But if I don't it will be around that time before June ends. So it was such a cute book. I loved the idea behind it. I loved the premise of the story. I'm so excited that she's still writing and I'm so thankful she let me read the series early. And yes, definitely check out Never Doubt a Duke. It is on Amazon. 
uh, ebook and paperback. She did get both of her books. Um, she got them published and paperback, which she wasn't sure she was going to be able to do, but she was able to, and that's so exciting. I cannot wait to get my hands on a copy soon. The next book that I read was The Theory of Happily Ever After by Kristen Billerbeck. And I started this and got halfway through in like a matter of hours, and then it was days before I finished it, probably like a week. I just got so busy doing other things, and then I wasn't in the mood for a contemporary first person, so I read something else. But I rated this a 3 out of 5 stars. Um, I did read this in my readathon that you saw last week. You can check out that video here if you'd like to see me completely fail. Um, but I did end up finishing this book during the readathon. And there were some aspects to it that I liked. I enjoyed the lightheartedness to it, but I was not a fan of the characters. Um, like, towards the middle, it was, it just kind of fell flat. And then it kind of picked up towards the end again. It was like, fine in the beginning, then a slow downhill descent, then it stayed flat for a while, and then, like, it was like this kind of thing. It was okay. It was cute. Not my absolute favorite book. Um, I don't know if I would ever read it again. I'm just having a really hard time finding contemporary books that I'm like in love with. So if you have any, please, please let me know. Um, but it was okay. Like it was cute. I know people who would enjoy it, but I also know some people who really really didn't like it. There were some characters that I was not a fan of. Whiny, annoying characters. But I got through the book. It was a fast read. Just wasn't super, super enjoyable, if that makes sense. Alright, the next book that I read was actually also included in my readathon. And that was All for, All for Love, I should say, which is three historical novellas. The Bone and Birthright by Mary Keneally, uh, A Lady of Esteem by Christiane Hunter, and At Your Request by Jen Tirano. Overall, I rated this book a 4.5 out of 5 stars, and a full review for the full book will be up on my blog soon, probably in the next couple days, where you can also, again, read my complete breakdown of all three stories and my reviews on each story. If you're interested in reading any more of my thoughts, broken down I should say definitely check out my blog post it will be up shortly keep an eye out for it yes I absolutely loved it and I'm so excited to see these lovely ladies working together and so excited to see these novellas finally in print the next book that I read and the last book that I read in my readathon was The Girl's Guide to Conquering Life by Eric and Jonathan Katherman and this is how to ace an interview change a tire talk to a guy and 97 other skills you need to thrive. And I rated this a 4 out of 5 stars. This was such a fun, cute, quick read. Um, definitely perfect for any preteens or tweens or just now turning teens that you know who aren't quite comfortable in themselves and aren't quite comfortable in the teen aspects and things that they need to do as they grow up. This would be the perfect little guidebook. I don't want to say guide. I use guidebook loosely, um, but a, a good little handy step-by-step -step thing to have, um, a little guide to have. So it's definitely really cute, really light, but I wouldn't really recommend it for older people just because most people know how to do these things, but it would be perfect for a gift, uh, your sister, your cousin, your daughter, your niece, anybody that you know who is within probably I would say 13 to 16 probably would be a great range for this but it was cute regardless so the last book that I read in the month of May was called Cowboys of Summer and this was a novella collection with with stories by authors Mary Keneally, Cheryl St. John, Tina Radcliffe, Missy Tippins, Lorna Sealstand, I believe is how it's said, and Sherry Shackelford. And overall, the entire collection, I rated a 3.5 out of 5 stars. Um, 
and it was okay again there were books there were stories that I really enjoyed and some that I really did not you can read my breakdown on all of the stories in my blog post I'll link it down below so you can check it out if you're interested in hearing all of my thoughts on each individual story overall I like the idea I love a good Western I love a good cowboy but there were just some things that I wasn't really a fan of and other things that I really really enjoyed I liked some aspects of the stories and that's the thing with novellas they're kind of hit or miss you're always always gonna have a story that you do not like and you're always gonna have a story that just made the entire thing for you so that's something that I always know going into novella collections I even put a disclaimer in my blog and I'll put it here as well I understand timelines and a certain amount of words they need to fall in love and I get that so I'm not super nitpicky but I've just seen so many done so well that I I feel like I have the you know I have the right to be a little nitpicky on some of my stories um, and that's my right as a reader as well it's my opinion but it's how I take those opinions and how I write them down and how I speak about them that is a big thing but that's a completely other video it's another topic I'm just saying it was a cute book overall um, and if you are interested in reading all of my inner thoughts you can definitely check out my blog post my current read that I'm hoping to be done with like probably June 1st which I mean you guys are seeing this June 1st um, but I'm hoping to be done like right at the beginning of June because I have a crazy TBR for the month. But that is The Accidental Guardian by Mary Keneally. I'm already halfway through it. I've just been so busy the last couple days. I've barely been home. So I haven't had a chance to sit down and finish it. But And so far I'm really enjoying it. It's a little different. Um, I feel like Mary's style is so different from one book to the next. But that's, again, another entirely different thing. But that's just that. If I'm not counting Last Chance Wife, which I'm not going to because I know that I finished it in April. In total, I read six books. Um, and yeah, it was a pretty, pretty decent reading month. Um, there, was some, there were some changes in the middle of the month of May. So it was just kind of like I'm getting back on a schedule again and I'm pushing myself to be ambitious so we'll see how it goes. Um, I enjoyed most of what I read. I got quite a few that I needed to get done. All of them I believe were review books so it was just kind of, it's hard for me to talk about the books when my reviews haven't technically gone live yet and because then I'm giving like spoilers and stuff. but. All my reviews should be live on these in the next couple days. And if you'd like to check out those blogs that I'm talking about, my blog is for the love of Christian fiction .blogspot.com. You can also check out my Instagram, which is for the love of Christian fiction. All my other links are in the description box below. And I seriously, seriously think that's it. I really hope it is. I'll see you guys next week. Bye.